Have you ever wondered what it's like to be born into royalty, yet be far from the throne? Welcome to the intriguing world of Prince Edward, Earl of Wessex. Imagine being born into a life of privilege, pomp, and pageantry. Now imagine being the third son in this regal lineage, where the throne seems an impossible distance away. This is the enigmatic reality of Prince Edward, the youngest son of Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip. His birth on the 10th of March 1964 was celebrated, yet his future role within the monarchy was uncertain, obscured by the looming presences of his elder brothers, Charles and Andrew. Edward's early years were spent in the glow of royal life, but always in the shadow of his elder siblings. His childhood was a blend of royal duties and normality, with private tutors and palace living interspersed with everyday experiences like attending school with commoners. It was an existence marked by a curious mix of opulence and ordinariness, a life of being in the limelight, yet not quite the star. While his older brothers were groomed for more prominent roles within the monarchy, Edward's future seemed less defined. Charles, as the eldest, was destined to be king, while Andrew, the second son, was expected to follow a military career. Edward, however, was left with a question mark hanging over his future. As the third son, he was far removed from the line of succession, and his role within the royal family was unclear. In many ways, Edward's early life was a paradox. He was born into one of the most famous families in the world, yet he was somewhat of an enigma, a prince whose destiny was not defined by birthright. This lack of a clear path, however, would prove to be a blessing in disguise, allowing Edward to forge his own unique path within the royal family. The stage was set for an unusual royal life with a path very different from those of his elder brothers. With no immediate prospects of ascending to the throne, Prince Edward dared to chart his own course. Now, let's take a step back in time to Prince Edward's academic journey. The prince, unlike his brothers Charles and Andrew, who pursued military careers, elected to study history at the prestigious Cambridge University. This decision was somewhat of a surprise. After all, he was the first British royal to attend Cambridge since his great-uncle Edward VIII. But Edward was determined to carve out his own path, and his time at Cambridge was a crucial part of that journey. After graduation, however, Edward did briefly follow in his family's footsteps by joining the Royal Marines. But this foray into the military was short-lived. He found the rigorous training and strict discipline at odds with his personal aspirations, his decision to leave the Marines was met with a barrage of criticism from the media. The headlines were harsh, but Edward remained undeterred. He had a different vision for his life, one that took him to the world of entertainment. An avid theatre lover, Edward had long been captivated by the allure of stage and screen. So, he decided to step into the realm of TV production. This move was a far cry from the traditional royal path, and it was met with a mix of fascination and skepticism from the public. But Edward was not deterred. He was determined to make his mark in the world of television, to bring his creative ideas to life, and to show that a royal could indeed have a career outside of the palace walls. He was not just Prince Edward, the Queen's youngest son. He was Edward, the aspiring TV producer. His decision to leave the military and step into the world of entertainment was a bold one. It was a move that challenged the norms, that pushed boundaries, and that showed Edward's determination to follow his own path. From royal duties to the world of TV production, Edward was carving out his own unique space in the royal family. Imagine a royal trading his crown for a clapperboard. That's exactly what Edward did. Diving into the world of television, Prince Edward, Earl of Wessex, proved that the path less travelled by a royal could indeed make all the difference. After his brief stint in the Royal Marines, Edward established himself as a television producer. In 1993, he founded Ardent Productions, a company that focused on producing high-quality documentaries and dramas. Edward's affinity for the arts and his keen eye for detail were instrumental in shaping the ethos of the company. Ardent Productions saw a fair share of successes, with programs that delved into historical events and figures. Edward's royal roots and his passion for history served as a unique concoction for creating compelling content. His programs were lauded for their insightful and engaging narratives that brought history to life. However, the journey was not all smooth sailing. 
The company faced criticism and controversy, especially when it was accused of exploiting Edward's royal status for commercial gain. One such instance was when a documentary about Edward's mother, Queen Elizabeth II, was deemed too intrusive by the media. This incident led to a widespread debate about the fine line between public interest and personal privacy. Financially, too, Ardent Productions had its share of ups and downs. Despite some successful productions, the company struggled to turn a profit and eventually ceased operations in 2009. The end of Ardent Productions marked the end of Edward's career in television production, but it did not dampen his spirit or his love for the arts. Edward's journey in the world of television was a testament to his determination and tenacity. He faced challenges head-on, learning and growing with each experience. His story is a reminder that success is not just about the destination, but also about the journey itself. The world of entertainment was not without its trials, but Edward was not deterred. His time as a royal producer, though filled with highs and lows, is a significant part of his unique narrative as a member of the British royal family. With the dawn of the new millennium, Edward found himself back on familiar grounds. After a brief foray into the world of television, Edward returned to his royal duties with a renewed sense of purpose. The once young prince, now a seasoned man, took on roles that reflected his personal interests and experiences. One such role was his creation of the Duke of Edinburgh's award scheme. Inspired by his father's original award program, Edward's version aimed at encouraging young people to strive for their personal best. It was an initiative that combined his passion for youth development with the values instilled in him through his royal upbringing. The scheme challenged young individuals to step out of their comfort zones, learn new skills, and make a difference in their communities. Edward's personal life also flourished during this time. In 1999, he married Sophie Rhys Jones, a public relations executive he'd met at a charity event. Their courtship was notably low-key, a stark contrast to the public spectacle that often surrounds royal romances. Sophie, with her independent career and down-to-earth demeanor, was a breath of fresh air in the royal family. Together, they brought a sense of normality and relatability to the monarchy. Upon his marriage, Edward was given the title of Earl of Wessex, a name that harks back to the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms of England. It was a title that hadn't been used for over a thousand years, and its bestowal upon Edward was seen as a symbolic nod to the monarchy's roots and continuity. So, Edward, the youngest son of Queen Elizabeth II, who once stepped away from his royal obligations to carve his own path, found himself back in the royal fold. But this Edward was different from the young prince who left. He was a man who had tasted life outside the palace walls, who had built a career and a family of his own. Edward was back in the royal fold, but now as a more mature and accomplished individual. His experiences had shaped him, and he was ready to use his unique perspective to serve his country and his queen. So what does the life of a modern royal look like? Let's delve into Edward's current roles and responsibilities. As the third son of Queen Elizabeth II, Prince Edward, Earl of Wessex, has spent much of his life in the public eye. However, he's not just a ceremonial figurehead. Today, Edward is a full-time working royal, a role that comes with a wide range of responsibilities and commitments. Edward's calendar is typically filled with official engagements. He often attends charity events, launches, dinners, and meetings on behalf of the royal family. He's also a patron of over 100 organizations, ranging from the arts to education and sports. His role often involves supporting the work of these organizations, raising their profile, and helping them achieve their goals. But Edward's life isn't all about royal duties. When he's not wearing his royal hat, Edward is a devoted family man. He's married to Sophie, Countess of Wessex, and together they have two children, Lady Louise Windsor and James, Viscount Seven. Despite their royal titles, Edward and Sophie have always been keen to give their children as normal a life as possible. They're often spotted at school sports days and have been known to take family holidays away from the public eye. Edward's charity work is also a significant part of his life. He's particularly passionate about the Duke of Edinburgh's award, a youth development program founded by his father, the late Prince Philip. 
Edward has taken on a leading role in the organization, championing its mission to help young people build skills, confidence, and resilience. So, while his life may be far from ordinary, Edward has found a way to blend his royal duties with his personal passions and family life, creating a unique balance that allows him to serve both his country and his loved ones. From a royal birth to a unique journey, Prince Edward's life has been anything but ordinary.